Hey, welcome to How to Play, brought to you by The Games Capital. Today, the game we're looking at is Century Spice Road, which is the first in a series of games that are going to be standalone, but also able to be combined in some way as well, which um, we're not sure how that's going to work yet. Uh, those games are set for a future release, but initially we have Spice Road, which deals with the trading of various spices from the East into Europe, and we're going to be playing these traders that are going to be collecting the various spices, bringing them back and selling them to the merchants that we meet. Before we get into the gameplay, let's have a look at what's in the box. Okay, so the game consists of these really nice oversized cards. There are two different decks of cards. We have one deck that has the point cards that we're going to be trying to achieve during the game. The other deck contains the various merchants that we're going to use to uh, fulfill those requirements to get those cards. So we have two decks of cards. There are the cubes which represent the different spices. So we have yellow which is turmeric, we have red which is saffron, green which is cardamom and brown which is cinnamon. Different values, so the, the yellow is the least valuable, up to the brown being the most valuable. And you also get these nice little bowls to place them in as well. Uh, there are gold and silver coins, uh, a whole heap of those. Uh, and that's basically all the components for the game. Alright, so let's have a look at how you play. Okay, so to set up a game of Spice Road, you're going to take the point cards and lay out five of them face up, the remainder of the deck uh, on a draw pile. Also, you're going to take the merchant deck and lay out six of those cards on display, the rest forming the deck. Uh, you'll pop your cubes in the bowl, obviously put them in the order of value so that it's easy to, uh, to know which is worth what. Then you're going to take the gold coins, and depending on the number of players, you're going to have coins equal to double the number of players. The same with the silver coins, and you'll place those in a pile above the first point card, the gold coins, and above the second point card, the silver coins. And they work as a bonus for when those particular cards are collected. Then each player, as a starting hand, will receive two uh, merchant cards. Everyone gets the same two that do the same thing and more on how they work in a moment. So each player will get one of those and also you will randomly distribute these caravan cards and this is where you store the spices that you collect. One of those cards has a little symbol on it which indicates the start player. So whoever gets that will begin the game. But each player will begin with one of those, place it face up in front of them. They'll have their two cards in their hand and then you're ready to go. Now basically, on a turn, you can perform one action. And there are four choices for the things you can do on each turn. So let's examine those one by one. So the first action that you may perform is to play a card from your hand. Now initially you're only going to have the two cards in your hand, but as the game progresses you're going to collect more of these merchant cards which will give you more options. But basically there are three types of cards that you'll collect and be able to play during the game. The first one of those, uh, you initially have one of these in your hand, shows a number of cubes, in this case two yellow cubes. So if you elect to play that card, basically what that's allowing you to do is to take two yellow cubes from the supply and place them on your caravan. Now you've only got spot slots for 10 cubes in your caravan, so you need to keep that in mind. If you play that card, you put it face up in front of you and do the action. So that's the first type of uh, card or action that you can play. The second type, uh, using one of these as an example, if you had acquired this previously on a turn, the symbols here show a number of cubes, then an arrow pointing down, and a number of different cubes. What this allows you to do is to take cubes from your caravan, cash them in, and take the cubes that are showing at the bottom part. So in this instance, take two red cubes, cash them in, and collect two green cubes. So it's a way to upgrade your cubes. So that's one of the second possible action. The third type of action card, you start also with one of these in your hands, is to actually upgrade some existing cubes that you have. You'll notice there are two grey cubes, 
with an arrow pointing up. What that allows you to do is to take two cubes from your supply, cash them in and upgrade them to the next most valuable cube. So in the case of yellow, you could upgrade those to red. You can do it twice. So with two cubes, or I could convert one cube two times to jump up two levels. So turn one yellow into a red and then into a green. Uh, and that, that is what that action does. So they're the three types of actions that you're going to be able to perform on your turn. And that's the first option for your choice of action. Okay, so the second uh, possibility for an action on your turn is to acquire one of these merchant cards that are face up on display. I should have mentioned also at the start of the game, each player will get a number of cubes as a starting um, reserve, depending on start or turn order, that will change, but each player will have some to begin with. To acquire a card from one of these face up, it may cost you cubes, depending on the card that you select. So the card in this furthest to or closest to the uh, cubes spot is free. You can just take that as your action and add it to your hand. Every card down the line that you want, if you want to purchase, it's going to cost you a cube. You must place it on the card that you're skipping. If I want this card, I place one cube on to that spot and I can take this card. If I want this card, I've got to place one, two, three cubes in order to take that. And of course, what that allows then is for any person who takes these cards will get a bonus of a cube or whatever is on those particular cards at the time. Now, when you take one of these cards, the cards behind it slide forward and a new card will pop out into that end spot and be ready for the next player. So that's the action of acquiring cards. And obviously, as you acquire the cards, then it will give you more options for being able to play those to take uh, those actions we talked about previously. All right, so that's the second possibility of what you can do on your turn. Okay, the third option for an action is to rest. Now, what that does is you actually don't do anything on your turn, but you can now take any cards that you have previously played to take actions. You get to retrieve those, bring them all back up into your hand, ready to go for the next turn. So as you can see, as you accumulate cards, you're going to be able to reuse them turn after turn, but only by resting after they've been played do you get them back into your hand. So uh, that's the third possible action, a way to get those cards back into your hand. All right, there's one more uh, action that you can take on your turn. Okay, so the fourth and final possibility for an action on your turn is to claim one of the point cards here in this row. Now you'll notice each of the cards has a point value, so that's what it's worth at the end of the game, and also a series of cubes or a combination of cubes. To claim one of these cards, and you can take any one you want, you must be able to cash in from your caravan matching combination of cubes, and then you take that card, put it face down uh, in front of you. Now, if you take this card, or this card, the first or second, then you also get to take one of these coins when you claim it. It's like a little bonus. Now, at the end of the game, every gold coin that you've collected is worth three points, and every silver coin that you've collected is worth one point. So it certainly pays to try and achieve these cards that are in these two spots to get those bonus points. Now, once a card is taken, just as with the merchant row, all the remaining cards slide forward and a new card comes out so that there's always five on display. And they're the four actions that you can perform. Each turn you can do one of those four things and then it moves on to the next player. All right, let's have a look at how the game finishes. Okay, so the game will end when a certain number of these point cards are taken by a single player. So in a two or three player game, the first person to get six point cards will trigger the end of the game. In a four player game, it's the person, or as soon as somebody gets five of those point cards, then the game will end. Now the game will end at the end of the 
current round when that occurs. And then everyone will add up the points that are on their point cards. Also, any gold or silver coins are added to the score. And as well as that, any uh, cubes that you've got on your caravan still could be worth points. So the yellow cubes are worth nothing, but every other color cube is also worth one point in addition. So you add up all your points in those three different uh, ways, and whoever has the highest score, obviously, is the winner. In summary, players take on the role of spice merchants trying to fulfill orders. On each turn, players can choose from four possible actions. Play a card, acquire a card, rest, or claim a point card. As soon as one player claims their fifth card in a four-player game, the game ends. Players add up points on cards, coins, and remaining cubes. The player with the most points wins. And that is Century Spice Road, a relatively simple game in terms of uh, what you can do. You've got four actions to perform each turn, uh, four choices of actions rather. The strategy obviously comes in in deciding which of these merchant cards are going to work well and creating a bit of an engine that allows you to play certain cards that work with other cards to get the right cubes to collect the various point cards. So simple and yet uh, quite a bit to think about as you play. Be interesting to see what the next instalment is all about and how it combines but until then we currently have spice road and i hope you enjoy playing thanks for watching happy gaming